So here's another example of one of my three for two hauls from Eagle Moss Hero Collector. And I hadn't intended to get this size of the original Enterprise, uh, but I couldn't get the smaller size. It wasn't available. And I somehow felt it was only right that I should have the Enterprise that started it all in a, at a decent scale because I do love these XL size models of the uh, Star Trek ships because they are just beautiful to look at. Incredible amounts of um, detail on them, incredible paintwork on them. And um, I felt it would be rude not to. The only slight snag is that this now commits me to getting all of the Enterprises at XL size because uh, otherwise that would just be wrong, wouldn't it? Uh, and ironically, I already have um, an All Good Things XL Enterprise, which I I bought in an early offer when it was at a really really good price. So I did set a precedent for myself there, which um, I guess I should now follow through on over time. So let me open this up um, and let's have a look at it because this will be the start of my my enterprise based collection apart from my all good things one as I say but um, I think arguably it isn't canon anymore because as soon as Generations came out it became fairly obvious that we weren't going to get that ship as a canon ship really in the future because obviously that wasn't the way that they, they went with it so let's have a look so typical Eagle Moss um, packing there very very solid now this is interesting um, I'll, I'll show you why it's interesting in a moment. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see why I'm. Well, I'll explain why I'm saying that in a moment. I'm just um, scrimping paper to demonstrate this is a genuine unboxing because you've got to take that off to get it. This, which is the the standard stand that comes with all Eagle Moss models like this, um, it tells you what the ship is. Under, on the underneath and it also has a sort of a, a felt feel to it so they can't slip around to, for display purposes. So let's take her out. Now my immediate reaction on seeing this in the box was that um, it's quite it's quite off white and i'm not quite sure how how i feel about that as a concept because i don't know whether it's just the light i'm seeing it in but to me looking at it it looks quite sort of it's almost an olive color and i don't know if that's accurate or not which is um, unusual. I don't normally have any sort of negative comments about the um, the paint on these, and maybe it's just because it's not in sunlight. I don't know, but um, on screen I can see that what you're looking at it probably you probably can't see what I'm commenting on in a sense. But um, if I were to compare that and put that alongside other Eagle Moth models, it wouldn't be the same shade of grey at all by any stretch of the imagination. But it's incredibly sturdy it's incredibly heavy which is what i've come to expect from um, the big eagle moss ships let me just get rid of the box um i mean that's a good sort of 15 20 centimeters long it feels very sturdy the the, the secondary hull is metal so it's, there's a lot of weight to it primary hull is also metal um the nacelles are plastic, but that's pretty standard because they're, they're trying to keep the weight down so that the struts don't have to do too much work. Um, I think they're probably plastic as well, but that's okay because it doesn't. There's no give there at all. It's all very very solid. Um, so I'm, I say I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I suppose one of the things is you know the original series obviously was was standard resolution and. Maybe you just sort of pick up on more more detail, and they've probably got the original reference model, and so you know this is the this is the color that they felt best suited it. Um, so I mean, it's, I mean, it's lovely, and they've got they've managed to do that. If you can see that the navigational deflector 
there is very well done. I mean, obviously a, a bit you have to be quite careful of, but they've they've captured it really nicely, I think. And I should stress as well that there is they do do another version of this, which is the um, the Star Trek Discovery version of the Enterprise, and obviously that's that I imagine would be quite radically different to how this looks and feels um, in a sense because obviously they've modernized it to a certain extent it still looks very much like the classic yes um, but they have changed certain things and I quite like the, the traditional ships the older ships and I, I haven't have <laughs> as much as much for the sake of my budget as anything else um, I haven't gone so far as to get any of the discovery and later era ships simply because from my point of view, being an oldie, they don't really feel like my ships, if that makes sense to you. Um, I'm not saying I don't like them at all. Um, you know, they are, I think they, they're good designs and they haven't completely ditched the the original feel in, in coming up with them either, which is quite brave of them, I think. But equally, I don't think they could afford to, because I think they would have alienated a lot of people if they, if they, if they had tried to do that and just completely ditch everything that had gone before. That would probably have been rather foolish, I think. So, there she is on a stand. So, I mean, it's, I, I do like these XL size, and that it's not a, such a ridiculous size that you're going to run out of space in two seconds flat, but it's big enough that it has a certain presence on the shelf, which is which I think is, is good considering the money you normally pay for them. I mean, generally speaking, retail i think they're about sort of the 50 pound mark typically but if you get them when they're on offer you'll get that down to about sort of 36 37 for each one because you'll end up getting about 15 pounds off them um so although it seems quite scary if you buy them three at a time if you, if you can be patient then it, you know you do get more more bang for your buck basically um, I don't know if that runs in all territories. I'm speaking from a United Kingdom perspective on that one. Um, if you want a, an example to put up against it, that's the that's the smaller Stargazer model next to it. And as you can see, it's about, I would say it's about it's a good it's a good fifty percent smaller, if not a little bit a little bit smaller still. Um, but it's an interesting comparison though, because the Stargazer sort of sits in between the original series and the next generation, really. So I'm going to start my my little uh, Enterprise collection there, and if you keep an eye out on the, this playlist, you will see me populate it fairly shortly with um, another Enterprise, um, and I will probably include this one in that one again for comparison purposes, and you'll 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 see why when you see that video. So. Um, Thanks for checking in. Um, I hope that's been of, of use to you if you're considering going for it. And um, at some point, I'll get what I intended to get, which is the this scale of ent original Enterprise with no bloody A, B, C, or D. Or indeed E, but Scotty didn't know about that one at that point. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers.